Hey guys, Toby Mathis here, and today we're going to be talking about how do I get paid out of my LLC? And so I'm going to break it down for you. Number one, an LLC is not a tax type. So whenever you think of an LLC, think of a vehicle that is created in the state, but it's not a partnership, it's not a corporation, it's not an individual, it's not a sole proprietorship, unless you designate it that way with the IRS. So you actually have to go through some steps here depending on how you want it to be taxed. If I do nothing and I am the sole owner of an LLC, it's, it's considered disregarded. It goes right to me and it's using my social security number. If I obtain an EIN for it, which is the employer identification number with the IRS, then I'm gonna designate, is it a partnership? Is it an S corp? Is it a C corp? Should I ignore it and let its member or its owner be the party that pays the tax on it and just have the LLC ignored? All of those things are my options. And so to answer this, how do I get paid? We have to first determine what type of entity it is. If it is ignored, then you can, it's just you. You're free to take money out of it. If it has a bank account, you could take that money out at any time because you and the LLC are one and the same for tax purposes. You don't have to do payroll. You don't have to do anything special. If it is an S Corp, same issue. I can take money out as distributions. And the only thing I have to be aware of is that I need to take a reasonable salary for my activities as the member of that LLC or of that S Corp. So a member of the LLC that is taxed as the S Corp. They're going to treat you no differently than a shareholder of an S Corp. And if you are providing services and you're taking distributions, you need to be paid a reasonable salary under those circumstances. Rule of thumb is about one third of whatever that profit is, whatever the distribution amount of net profit, you want to make sure that that's coming out as salary. But technically, it's whatever a reasonable amount is for similar services and depending on what you're doing. So again, so let's say that we have an S Corp making $100,000 a year. The rule of thumb would say, pay yourself at least $33,000 a year in salary. But technically, it's whatever the reasonable compensation for that job is. And you're kind of sitting on both sides here. So there's some practitioners that would say, oh, you know, we have to go to salary.com and do all that. It's whatever is in that reasonable realm. It can be the low end of that reasonable realm or the high end of that reasonable realm. But again, the rule of thumb most people use is that third. What we care about is making sure that we are paying ourselves a salary that compensates us for the amount of time we're spending in that S corporation or on that S corporation. So there's two types of income that come out of the S corporation. In fact, I'll even write that up. So if it's ignored, so if it's called disregarded, really no rules. You can take the money out easy. If we are an S Corp, then we have to worry about two things. If we are taxed as an S Corp, so this is termed an LLC taxed as an S Corp. I'll put a line right here so we don't confuse them. An LLC taxed as an F S Corp, then we have two types of income. We have salary and we have distributions. In those distributions, we really don't have to worry about too much because it's just gonna be considered the net profit. So if I am taking money out of that uh, S corporation, it's either receiving my capital back or it's distributing the net profit. Uh, if I take out too much money, I could be looking at a, a, a tax situation depending on how much I am at risk. For example, if I have a loan, uh, that I have a loan that I put in that money into the S corporation, I don't have to worry. But if the S corporation gets a loan and I pull that money out, I now have to be a little bit worried about some of the tax implications. But for the most part, it's, it's pretty easy taking money out of that S corporation. Next type of entity is that C corp. Same thing here. In a C corp, I'm either taking out salary or wages, or I'm taking out dividends. The problem with C corps, you'll oftentimes pe hear people say, it's double taxed, and the reason that they're saying it's double taxed is because those dividends are taxes on the profit after it's been taxed by the corporation. So the corporation pays a flat 21% as of today on its net profit. So let's say it makes $100,000. Uh, 
I would pay $21,000 in corporate taxes for federal. So there's $79,000. Let's say it issues that $79,000 out to me as dividends. I would pay tax on those dividends as long-term capital gains. It would be 0, 15, or 20%. So depends on what my tax bracket is. That could actually be a bad thing. I may be subjecting myself to a little bit extra tax because I'm paying 21% here plus the 0, 15, or 20% over here on the dividend side. On the S-Corp, another thing to consider, going back up, is the salary is subject to Social Security or what they call FICA taxes. That's the old age disability insurance, hospital insurance, which is the Medicare portion. Uh, so it's old age uh, disability and survivors insurance and the hospital insurance. That is what would normally be 15.3%. The employer pays half, you pay half. You have to pay it on that. On the distributions, you don't have to pay any of that. If you are a disregarded entity, you take the money out. But if it's active income, it's subject to self fee taxes, which is 15.3%. Hopefully you can see that on that end of the board. We'll take a look. It looks like we were able to get it. But that's 15.3%. So it depends on the type of income I make. So if I am working in a regular job, so let's say that I'm running a pizza shop and I am a disregarded entity, I can take the money in and out of that LLC, no problem. But all of the profit of that enterprise, no matter whether I take it or not, is going to tax, be taxed to me as active income. So it's going to be subject to federal income taxes at my ordinary bracket, plus it's going to be subject to self-employment tax, which is 15.3%. There's a phase out on a portion of the self-employment tax, the old age, disability, and survivors. It phases out, generally speaking, 140,000 to 150,000. I think it's 147,000 this year, but there's always a phase out on 12.4% of it. The Medicare never, never phases out. So you always get hit with that 2.9. So you always have got to be careful. On the flip side, if that LLC is holding rental real estate, or any, you know, a stock portfolio. I don't have to care about any of that. It's passive activity. I can take the money in and out anytime I want. Whether I take it out or not, it's being taxed to me. Drop down to the S Corp, same scenario. The nature of that income will dictate how it's being taxed to me. If I am running a business, Toby's Pizza Shop, through my S Corp, I need to make sure that if it has net profit, and I'm taking money out of it, I need to take a salary. If it makes net profit and I take no money out, technically I don't have to pay myself a salary. I could just let it all be taxed down to me, even though it's in that LLC and I never took it out, I still pay it as though I received it as uh, it should be on a form K-1 and it's gonna go on page two of my schedule E. I would have the, that net income falling down to me. But if assuming that I'm taking money out and that I need to take the money out, if I am taking out distributions all through the year, so let's say that January, February, March, April, May, I'm taking out distributions. At a minimum in December, I would want to take out a salary equal to about a third of that amount. At a minimum. Now I could take that salary and because it's active ordinary income, I could contribute it to a 401k. I could say, hey, I'm going to pay myself, let's say I made $100,000, i am going to pay myself $33,000. Uh, i am 50 years or older, so I'm going to have $19,500 that I can immediately contribute. Plus, I have a makeup provision of $6,500, so I can put $26,000 immediately into a 401k, just because I'm 50 years or older. For folks that are under 50, it's $19,500. And the business can also contribute another 25% of whatever my salary was. So if it's 33,000, then I would cut that up. What would that be? Let's see, half of that would be, what is it? I don't even want to start doing math, 16.5. And then half of that, so it'd be 18, uh, or uh, 8,250. So I could put another contribution from the company itself, from those distributions into my 401k. And I get a total tax deduction because it all flows onto my return. I'd be getting a pretty sizable tax deduction under that. So 
under those numbers. If I'm trying to add it up in my head, it'll be 26 plus 8,000. So uh, about 34,000, not too bad, right? I'm getting a nice contribution that some of that would just be out of the net profit. Some of it would be right from the, the salary. Regardless, I am not paying federal income taxes on a good chunk of that. Whether I leave the distribution in the S corporation or take it out, even when I take that salary, regardless, it's being taxed to me because I'm the owner of that entity. If there's multiple owners, then it's proportionate to ownership in that S corporation. If you're taxed as a C corp, then similar situation to above, I have to take a salary out. I could have uh, reimbursements of expenses, French benefits, things like that, that I can get out too. But I'm talking about if I'm making money in that C corp, I'm either taking it out as a salary or as wages and as a dividend. So I might be looking at a double tax. So a lot of folks, they're not running their businesses directly as a C corp unless they're very cognizant of what those numbers are going to look like so they don't put themselves in a situation where they're double taxed and that double tax adds up to more than they would have paid ordinarily. If you're in the highest tax bracket, these things are roughly equivalent, so it makes it pretty easy. Uh, last thing is, in addition to this disregarded side, if there's more than one owner, so I would just say uh, two or more, then you're going to be taxed as a partnership. Similar rules to this, it flows down to the partners, whether you take the money or not. Whether you take it or not, it's flowing down to you. And it doesn't matter, again, if that money is sitting in the LLC that's taxed as a partnership at the end of the year. So let's say you and a partner buy into some real estate and that real estate generated a loss or a profit. It doesn't matter whether there's money left in that partnership or whether you took it out. It's going to flow onto your uh, tax return on page two of your Schedule E. If it is disregarded and it's an active ordinary uh, business, it's going on your Schedule C. If it is a uh, other type of business, so for example, if I have a particular type of real estate where I'm not actively participating, um, I may end up on a Schedule E. It always depends on what your business is as to which form it's going to end on. If I am a partnership, it's always going on to uh, page two of my Schedule E. If I am an S Corp, it's always page two of my Schedule E. If I am a C Corp, it's going to be wages or distributions. And the C Corp is going to report the income, its net income, and then report the distributions of its dividends uh, on, it, on its return. So anyway, pretty simple. Once you understand how do I pay myself out of an LLC, number, number one is figure out how you're taxed and then apply the rule accordingly. If in doubt, just talk to your accountant or talk to your tax professional, talk to somebody that knows so that you can make sure you don't harm yourself. Here's a general rule of thumb to make it really easy for you. For the most part, and this is almost always true, if I contribute money into an entity and I receive it back, it's not taxable. So if I fund one of these, no matter what it is, if I put $100,000 into any of these businesses and it hands me back the $100,000, generally speaking, that's not going to be taxable to you. You're either receiving back your investment or you're receiving back your capital account you're receiving back your basis. In all those cases, I am not going to be taxed on that. So if you're really worried, you're in, you're in a bind, you put money into a business, and you're like, oh my goodness, what should I do? Again, general rule of thumb, I could take the money back out. Another thing is, if it's making good money, and it's one of these categories, you can always take the money out without really any worry of a taxable event. You just have to be cognizant on that S-Corp of making sure that if you are taking distributions and you have net profit, that you're taking a reasonable salary. Hope that helps. Now, if you know anybody who has an entity, an LLC, and they, you ask them, how is it taxed? And they go as an LLC, you might wanna share this video with them just because there's no such thing as an LLC taxed as an LLC. There's no LLC tax form with the Internal Revenue Service. It's gonna be ignored. So the owner, the member gets to pay the tax it's going to be a 1065 if it's a partnership, an 1120S if it's an S Corp, or an 1120 if it's a C Corp. There's no such thing as an LLC tax form. It just doesn't exist. So you always have to be cognizant. So share this with somebody if you think that 
they're, that they may not understand what type of business they're actually operating. Again, because that LLC is a creature of, ta- of state law and the feds don't recognize it. They just say, tell me how it's taxed according to our rules. And again, there's no such thing as an LLC tax form for the, uh, for the IRS. So you want to make sure that you're designating what type of is the appropriate entity, then you follow the rule. Share this with whomever you think would actually benefit from it. And then, of course, subscribe and like and keep listening in because we always have information that's going to help you. And if you'd leave us a comment of a topic that you want us to cover, we absolutely would do that. Thanks, guys.